Welcome everyone to a very, very special Metabolic Monday with your boy, the Metabolic Mender, functional health coach Vince Pitstick, been at this game 18 years, teaching you all about the world of functional health, fitness, nutrition, sport and athletic science, and mixed all the way in with even a little bit of medical science, all balled into one to give you amazing answers, insight, resources, uh, and so much more over this 45 minutes to an hour we spend together every Monday. We call it Metabolic Monday, where I answer your questions live, either from the questions tabs in my stories or straight from the live feed. Speaking of the live feed, say hello, live feed. Say hello. I want to say hi to everybody. Hope you all doing great. I see some of my day ones there loading on in. Why don't you drop in the chat where you're watching from? Where you at in the world? You What state? what country, drop it in the chat below. And while you're at it, why don't you let me know how was your Monday? Was it really stressful, 10 out of 10? Can't wait till it's over. What's up? I hope it's Tati. If I said that wrong, I apologize. Hello, hello. Oh, there's everybody, hello. And then if it was a one out of 10, if it was super chill, easy Monday, drop that in the chat, one out of 10 or 10 out of 10. Let me know how stressful your Monday was. And one of the best things about Mondays is that they end, and I hope we end it strong here at Metabolic Monday. Florida, Ohio, Louisiana, Arizona, Lake Havasu, I believe, right? North Carolina, what's up? Reno, Nevada in the house, Houston, Texas, Monday going great. All right, Melissa, hello. Hello, everybody. All right, we're letting people load on in Colorado. We have a very, very special, special Metabolic Monday. I am going to announce the winner of our one year of free coaching experience, life changing. Someone's life is going to change tonight. We had over, Producer Malachi, we had over 700, close to 700 entries it was our most entries ever in Nutrition Dynamic Now Vital Coaching history. And I wanna thank all of you. We got to read all these amazing stories about why a year of coaching would change your life and why it's so important to you. And we will able to pick a winner and we will announce it here on the live. And we'll also go out to our social media outlets to make sure that we get a hold of this very, very special person. So we're letting people load on in as we make the announcement. Um, again, too, by the way, um, you join us at the 1 in 100 Project. Come hang out with your boy. 1 in 100 is where all people like you who believe that fitness and function or medicine should and could and would be different if there were only people to move the needle to disrupt the industry. There we jam pack you full of information, special like little giveaways. We do all kinds of special things in our Facebook group, the one on 100 project. Come be a part of the one on 100, join our Facebook family uh, if you would please. All right, people are loading on in. We're about to get to the announcement. Uh, we do have to get this out of the way. This is not medical advice. I'm not a doctor. I'm a functional expert, but do not treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Please see a functional practitioner or doctor before utilizing any of the information provided here today. Huh. Now, got that over. Now, everybody in the chat, make sure if you have any questions, I have an amazing team. We've got Cam from Metabolic Mentor University. We've got some of my, my top team. We've got Nathan in the chat. We've got Waleed in the chat. We are here to make sure that you are seen, heard, and questions are answered. If you have any questions ranging from the whole multitude of worlds that exist in fitness and medicine and functional medicine. Uh, whatever you need, we wanna make sure that we either get you the right answer or lead you in the direction that is the truth to the answer because there is so much bullshit out there. You every, every scroll on Instagram, I'm like, bullshit, 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 bullshit. Oh, there's some truth, bullshit. And so we are here to cut the fat. So, all right, without further ado, we got a pretty good uh, amount of people in here. We have to get to the big announcement. We have been doing this win a year of life coaching, functional health coaching, one whole year. This is unprecedented. Nobody ever gives a year. We're giving away a year. It includes the labs. It includes the supplements and everything tailored just for you to work through with one of our top coaches in the country, our medical teams included, everything there is included. And we had to go through almost 700, right around 700 entries. Uh, again, we got to hear all of your really heartfelt stories about what this would mean to you, how this could change your life. And certainly one year of coaching could absolutely change your life. We do it every day. And so 
Um, this person that we're about to make the announcement, all right, again, we went through so many different entries, but this person really kind of struck a chord and um, so we'll give you a little bit of information about her. Uh, she's a mom um, at, that uh, is on the edge of a future that she feels can go either way. She, um, right now she's at 245 pounds and she feels like her life is a little bit on the edge. And her daughter always comes in the house and asks her almost every day, mommy, are you happy? And she says that I can only hope to answer her truthfully someday. Um, and so this process could give me renewed energy, confidence in my clothes and endurance to be the productive mom my little girl deserves, loves and deserves. So this really struck a chord with us. Without further ado, the winner of our first annual one year of functional health coaching is Amy Wagner. I don't know if it's Wag Wagonier. Go to the other screen there, producer uh, Malachi. Amy Wagner or Wagonier, <laughs> probably Wagner. Wagner. We're gonna go Wagner. Congratulations, Amy. Now listen, if you participated, we have really good news. Since we had an unprecedented number right, of people that applied. I've been so moved by this that me and the team at Vital Coaching went ahead and we are going to put a pot together of an additional 20, we are gonna give away $20,000 to, to many, uh, or total, in, in parts of scholarships to um, so many different people. So if you apply, hold tight, you may get access to that $20,000 pot. So we have more to give away. I wanted to give away a whole nother set of cash. So we put together about $20,000 and we're gonna give that $20,000 away to many of you lucky entry participants. So hold tight. If you didn't win, there's more coming. So congratulations um, to Amy. Um, I, don't know if, I don't know if Amy is on. I bet she's probably not. She's gonna freak out when she sees this, congratulations to you. Oh, that's you? Fry Girl 88 that's Amy? Wait, wait to see if I can get a response from her. Wait, let's see, there might be a little bit of a delay. Amy, is that you? I don't know if she, wait a minute, no, cool, I'm not sure who that is to. Oh, I'm Fry Girl, okay, I don't know who people are answering to, so. No, oh, that's not Amy. Okay, well, listen, congratulations. If someone could let Amy know, we will make an announcement. Well, hello, Cynthia, you're great too. <laughs> I was reading that wrong. But listen, we are gonna be reaching out to many of you to give away the $20,000 that we still have left over, so hold tight, okay? Anybody can still win, but congratulations to Amy, your story, we heard you, you are seen, and we cannot wait for radical change in your life. All right, we gotta move on. All of you had so many great questions. And, and tonight, that might not be the end of all the giveaways. To people that are loud and proud in the chat, people that ask questions, people that drop comments, I will be awarding free care packages from New Ethics Formulations. If you're not familiar, New Ethics Formulations, the best supplement company on the planet Earth. Why? Because I design the formulas, I review the COAs from the laboratory testing, and then we use those products on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people to make sure they actually do the thing that they're supposed to do, which is what makes us so unique in New Ethics Formulations. I will be giving product away today. So ask questions, be loud and proud in the chat, and you might earn yourself a care package from New Ethics. How will we be notified if we won part of the scholarship? Great question. You will be emailed. They will be reaching out to you by email. So be wait patiently. We're gonna actually, starting tomorrow, we're gonna start notifying some of the other winners of the 20K that is left over and giving it out to different people. So really hoping um, uh, to hear from some of you and all the amazing changes that will come uh, from the rest of, uh, of, of this giveaway. Um, but make sure if you've got questions, drop them in the chat. We wanna be here to support you. What kind of supplements? That is new ethics formulations. Well, it depends. It depends on the questions and, and, and your needs. If I was talking to a 20 year old guy, I'm not gonna send him a product for PMS. <laughs> so it all depends on the individual we're discussed. How do you feel about tinctures of iodine orally versus feeding iodine? 
So Chelsea, uh, in terms of eating uh, organic, or we'll say elemental amounts of iodine in a diet, it's a really good idea, whether you're having kelp or you're having seaweed or you're eating something of the like that has uh, iodine in it. As far as like tinctures of iodine, I'm a big fan. I personally like iodorol. Um, there are, I love a gene test that can let you know there are certain gene pathways that'll let you know if you're someone who tends to run a little shy on iodine. Um, and uh, it's good to know and, and also do blood work that checks your iodine level. Um, and so it's good to always get that checked because if you're a little bit low, I might take you know 12.5 milligrams for some people and other people would only need micrograms. So I really like both of them. I think in a healthy diet that we should have things that contain iodine, but I also think that there are times to make sure that we add iodine to our diet through a tincture or through a tab. Uh, go up a little bit for me, producer Malachi. Does working out help clear cortisol if it's high? So Taylor, typically cortisol um, is something that is produced when we work out, right? Um, and it is obviously a, st a stress hormone. Um, so clearing cortisol typically happens when we rest and interestingly enough, uh, oftentimes when we eat. So we eat a really healthy diet and when we rest, we keep our body at rest. That's what tends to lead to clear clearance. Other things that you can take, phosphatidylserine, other herbs and adaptogens. We're gonna talk about one of them today that can help clear cortisol. Um, but things that help metabolize cortisol would be like a phosphatidylserine, uh, magnolia root, um, things like that. So that can help with it. Uh, another question, is glutathione one of the best detox support available? If so, how long should you take it? Well, low, great question. Glutathione is great to take, but you can also take things that just help your body detox or produce Glutathione, like there's a great product by Metagenics called, um, uh, it's called Glutaclear, and it helps your body make its own glutathione. Glutathione is a master antioxidant. It is anywhere from like 40 to 50 times stronger than any other antioxidant on the planet. Your body does make it, but due to genetics or a pro-inflammatory lifestyle, you may not have enough of it. And ironically, the amount of ingredients that go into making glutathione is significant or the number of ingredients that you would need to burn up to replace it if you don't have enough to try to try to conjure up more antioxidants. So it can be nutrient depleting if you don't have enough glutathione because your body's got to burn through a bunch of different agents. You could take glutathione all year. There's no research that suggests with glutathione that you, you can't continuously take it. Um, I like liposomal glutathione because most of glutathione doesn't pass through digestion. So you can't really have oral glutathione. Um, I do like injectable glutathione or liposomal. That way the glutathione is in a liposome, which attaches a lipid bilayer, attaches to the lipid bilayer of your cells and then absorbs and kind of bypass some of that digestive issue. So do coffee enemas really increase glutathione production by 500%? Um, that's a little bit high. It will induce antioxidant production and will upregulate some glutathione production. Um, to say 500%, uh, I, don't, I don't know any data that would suggest that. I mean, in some people it's possible. Uh, it is certainly possible. Um, i tell you what, let's see, go, go uh, up a little bit, go up a little bit, a low right there. Low, we're gonna go ahead and reward you actually. We'll give you a product that, we'll give you our liposomal glutathione that we use from uh, Pure. Uh, Waleed Karat is in the chat there. Waleed can go ahead and take your information low. Thank you for participating on Metabolic Monday. We're gonna go ahead and send you a pure encapsulations liposomal glutathione, and I think you're gonna love it. Take one or two uh, daily. Again, maybe you wanna, you know, for effective purposes, antioxidants you can kind of take all the time. It's kind of like a multivitamin. You don't have to really stop it. Um, so, but you can go ahead and take that, and uh, I think you'll really like it. I take glutathione, I inject glutathione. So I like injectable glutathione, 200 milligrams twice a week. And then I also eat plenty of antioxidants through a diet. Uh, Evolve into you said, tried progestin pill. Well, that's a synthetic progesterone. Have MC uh, or multiple chemical, well, you have oh, mast cell activation and had a reaction. Um, not sure how to help my progesterone levels. I remember you saying a pill versus cream was best. Well, first off, I don't recommend progestin. That's a synthetic progesterone. One of the things you can go ahead and take is something called Progon B, which is uh, bioidentical and it comes from yam extract. 
in its trace amounts. 100 milligrams is a lot to take if you're sensitive, okay? So you just wanna take a couple drops. It's like, uh, think of it like a, um, um, a uh, uh, essential oil that you take orally. I would try like two or three drops. That'll work well for you. I don't know if you had a reaction. I think you just gained water retention, which will happen when you add a bunch of progesterone at one time. And then sometimes when we're really like, you know, when we've, been, when we've been traumatized by a condition, we relate everything back to the condition. So we call everything a flare. But adding progesterone probably didn't cause a flare, but it did cause you to swell at first, which felt like a flare, but it probably wasn't a flare. Alina, what would you do for a 20-year-old female, pain for period, painful periods, very moody, lots of anxiety, and doesn't sleep well? I have her on men's release, but it's not enough. What else? Great question. We see this with, with women all the time. Uh, young girls that are, are coming of age. So a lot of times it's a little bit of genetic, it's a little bit of nutritional, and it's a little bit of emotional, right? And I know a little bit about you, and so daughters that have mothers that have had chronic health issues usually have genetic abnormalities that also will be prevalent in the daughter, right? So most conditions pass familial lines. So if a mother has something, it's way more likely that her daughter will get it than her son right? So it's very, very common. Uh, and so I would suggest genetic precursors that help you process hormones, process neurotransmitters, because it can help both with the anxiety and with hormonal balance and painful periods. That would mean methylfolate, two grams a day. Choline is a really good one. Um, I would also recommend um, probably a little bit of SAMe, if I'm being honest. So you can try, I, I, my suggestion right, is to use a product called Hormone Plus Complete, right, and give her one serving of that that's got all the stuff that'll help her process her hormones and open up detox pathways, along with a product called Blisphora. Blisphora has SAMe, methylfolate, and methyl B12. And give her one or two of those a day, and I think that will help a lot. I have a call. All right, well, come on back. We'll see you. Thank you for letting us know. Any suggestions uh, for, uh, for venous surge or venous insufficiency? Um, well, that's a interesting, let me, okay, now you've stumped me. That's a weird term, venous insufficiency. Let me, that's a, um, okay, so, so I, I, this word, I don't know. Venous insufficiency is a really interesting way of talking about edema. That's why I was like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? No one uses that term, so I don't know who gave you that term. And they're blaming it like maybe on your, on your blood vessels. The veins, halves keep moving uh, back towards the heart. So yes, so um, yeah. So okay, first, we, we, let's, let's do minimal effective dose. I don't like when we give these special names to conditions and then we're out there looking for the, the solution to this one thing when we need to dissect and chop up a little bit of what it is. First off, what we're dealing with is edema, edema buildup of the legs, and it's usually caused by imbalances related to our hormones and stress, right? So one of the first things that I highly recommend is you need to open your lymphatics up, okay? Push things through your spleen, your gallbladder, open your lymph, lymphs, which is the drainage highway of your body, and also hydrate your body really, really well, because it's gonna open up your vascular system. So you can also take, um, NOS, so things that, that, that like beetroot juice you can do, um, anything that's like an NO2 product, right? Um, can help like citrulline malate or something like that. But I would start with our, our, our flush, do our flush course. It's all, oh, we're still having that? Still having that? No, I think. Okay. So uh, the flush is a low, You first you wanna do a low oxalate diet. You wanna take the pressure off the kidneys, you wanna make sure you're getting a lot of water, electrolytes, you wanna use, uh, use low inflammatory, low toxin foods. Um, flush your system, open your lymphatics up, right? Expand your blood vessels, and then use a product called Cortese to reduce your stress hormone, right? So, so you start with those things first. Increase your water to about 80, 90 ounces along with sodium and potassium, which is in the flush in the Metapure, or you can just add those things yourself Start there first, because a lot of times what they give these random names to, it's really more rudimentary than that. And then they just make a really unique name to try to identify your specific thing. So really start there, go do my flush course. It's like 
don't know, it's like 120 bucks or something like that. It's really inexpensive. Do the course, go educate yourself. It'll make a diet just for you. Flush your system out, get rid of the stress hormones, flush out any stuck estrogens, open your lymphatics, and I bet you'll find that a lot of your edema starts to go away. Also, don't stand in any one place or sit in any one place too long. I would say, especially if you're trying to get your edema to go away, you can learn, you can learn about dry brushing and then make sure that you don't stay in a standing or seated position longer than 20 minutes. Try to move around, try to sit down, uh, give your body some time to try to move the fluids through your body. And don't chase like really unique diagnosis is that I think they just try to give you a name to when it could be something much, much simpler. And then if that doesn't solve it, come see us. We have a 12 week guarantee that we can make progress on your condition. I'm sure me and my team will get rid of it. We have a guarantee. Come take the guarantee. If it doesn't work in the first 12 weeks, then we'll work with you for free till we do. So that's, that's, that's what vital coaching does. If you, if you get tired of it, we'll deal with it, but try that first. Excellent. Go ahead and go back up producer Malachi. We got the questions going in the chat. We got the chat going, everybody's doing great. What can cause high iron and low ferritin? Well, Dia, usually it's a sign of inflammation inside the body. Um, so uh, if your body is staying in a high iron position and it's not binding it to uh, receptors and then it's bound in uh, iron, that's what ferritin is. Ferritin is bound iron. So if you see this significant uh, imbalance, there's usually inflammation in the way of binding it. Right, so um, you know, I, I would I would consider like starting some anti-inflammatories, moving to a Mediterranean-based diet, try to reduce your stress, walk more. Um, you know, maybe uh, add some vitamin C. I'd say about anywhere from two to, two to three grams. Uh, start there, uh, and then you may have to go to the gut. Sometimes the gut needs to be reworked a little bit, getting rid of some inflammation out of the gut. But start there. Usually, it's a sign of inflammation inside the body. Taylor. Can oxytocin therapy help bring on a cycle when trying to recover from secondary amenorrhea? Interestingly enough, Taylor, ask that question. I'll dive into this more. Ask that question um, in my stories and I'll cover it more in depth next week because oxytocin is a fun topic. It's the love hormone. Women truly need a lot of it when they can. And women that are coming through really emotional turmoil or chronic dieting or eating disorder or some stressor that shuts off the cycle, oxytocin can certainly be a component of it. And I wanna dive into that more specifically and get into some research on oxytocin. So give me the opportunity to do that, but the general answer is yes, it can help 100%. Um, go up a little bit, producer Malachi. Let's give away some products. Let's give away some products. Oh, here we go. Uh, Jazz E. Rich says, what would cause connective tissue to become so tight? Usually water. Go up. Water and stress. Go up a little bit. Usually water and stress. So, um, uh, so again, more water in is more water out. So if you get too dehydrated, too stressed out, it's going to cause edema and the edema is gonna stretch and make you feel stretched and your connective tissues feel stretched. That's commonly what it is. Jazzy, Rich, let, I'm gonna go ahead, let's see if that's the case, and hormone imbalance, like estrogen dominance, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and send you one bottle of Estrocore and one bottle of Cordes. Uh, on the house, from us, uh, take, um, take one Estrocore twice daily and take two Cordes twice a day. See if that doesn't help you uh, get rid of some of that tightness that you feel. And if not, get a, get a Dutch test, a Dutch complete. A Dutch complete will, will help you there. Ali one says, can you talk more about the relation of high cortisol levels with constant HIIT training? I didn't realize this was a thing. Yes, okay. So the female body in particular, okay, more than even the male bodies, rest heavily on a balance between parasympathetic, which is rest and digest, sexual function, repair, remember, recover. And then sympathetic, which is fight or flight, which is uh, enhanced, you know, it's like uh, increased adrenaline, focused, enhanced physical ability. And what happens is, is that when we do hit cardio, it cranks our cortisol, which cranks our sympathetic system. If we do hit cardio for too long, it will lead to higher levels of circulating cortisol, staying too high too long, and that will stimulate adrenaline in our body and it'll make our ANS, our autonomic nervous system, feel very unsafe. 
right? And then when our body gets overstressed, our endocrine system stops producing hormones. That's why people who are really afraid all the time always end up with low hormones, right? The pituitary, the hypothalamus, and the thyroid regulate the rest of the body. So if there's too much CRH, corticotropin releasing hormone, right? Stimulating too much cortisol, right? Then you're going to, it's gonna dysregulate your endocrine system. And women are such a beautifully hormonally complex system that it needs harmony, right? And when that harmony is out of balance, what you're gonna find a lot is people who do too much high intensity cardio for too long do get chronic stress uh, symptoms because it, it puts out so much hormone. Uh, and because again, it really taxes the body and then we're not leaving enough time for rest, recover, repair, sleep, all of those things. So happens all the time. So you gotta deload high intensity. The, the higher the intensity of the training, the shorter the duration of the schedule or the cycle. So if you're gonna be doing HIIT style training for a good period of time, I don't recommend more than six weeks and then you need to deload it. How does fascia affect your entire system if you have chronic pain? Well, your fascia is, and we're probably talking about your external fascia, which is, is the fascia that keeps your whole body held together, right? It's, it's the stitching that keeps everything together. And when you have chronic pain, usually you have higher levels of inflammation and like ROS. And that can travel and get stuck in the fascia. And then, and then the body is going to respond by deactivating the muscle and, and the fascia getting tighter. So you're gonna get stiff, right? You're gonna feel tight, right? And that's part of what happens when the immune system, which is drawn in by inflammation, goes to the site of an area. So that's why doing fascia work can really break up, right? Get blood flow, get water or uh, hydration in there, right? And, and break that apart so that uh, other anti-inflammatory, like you get into the PGE2, which is the chemical composition of pain. You, you need things like proteolytic enzymes. You need things like, um, um, for example, like fish oil, right? Which is an oleanolic acid. You need these things to be able to get into the site and it can be hard to do that because that will break up PGE2 into something called PGE3, which is less inflammatory, causes less pain. Is liposomal glutathione safe for toddlers? I have a two and a half and a four year old. Um, I'm not sure they need liposomal glutathione. You would be better off making sure that they're getting their 10 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Um, you know, like in a greens formula, you know, something like that, because that's going to help their body make lots of antioxidants. Um, help, having them have a healthy diet, probiotic, it's probably even going to be better for a toddler. But four years old, if you want to give them a little bit of glutathione, you absolutely can. Um, but I, I don't think it's necessary until they get, you know, 12 to 15. Uh, no, wow. All the questions just keep coming in the chat. I don't even necessarily need to go to my, I've got questions above, but you guys have been great. Uh, have you seen any, oh, go back up for me. Have you seen any major effects on the hormones of women who had, uh, uh, oh, the gar, uh, gar, uh, cell vaccine as a teen? It, I'll tell you this, Taylor, the, 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 the direct relationship that we see with vaccines, I am not anti-vax by any means, but vaccines, just like anything, are an immunological stimulant, okay? What I do know is we see women who are on birth control, okay? that get a bunch of vaccines, have greater, higher amounts of metabolic issues, autoimmune conditions. This is observational, but there is evidence to suggest this. Women on birth control, more likely to have autoimmune. Women with that, that get vaccinations, more of them, more likely to have autoimmune. And then I see that in the office because some of our worst cases are always on, have a lot of both of them. It seems to me, Taylor, that if you are someone prone to a low estrogen state, or you're on a birth control that's low estrogen, or your body fat's way too low, you're overtraining all the time and your estrogen gets low, one of the things that we do know is that's gonna reduce something called T regulatory cells. T regulatory cells are cells that balance your immune system. So let's say you got, do you, maybe you've had a friend of girlfriends, like you go out with your girlfriends, 
and you got the one mother hen, right? That's making sure that everyone's good and everybody stays out of trouble. And then you got the wild one, right? She's always bringing the boys around, maybe getting it to, into it with other girls. Does that kind of make sense? I want you to think of T and B cell lymphocytes as the girl that starts all the fights and brings all the boys to the yard. And then I want you to think about T regulatory cells as the mother hen that calms everything down. The lower that your estrogen gets, the less mother hens you have, and the more uh, of the troublemakers that you have. And they cause inflammation and drama inside the body. So birth controls, the science is clear, significantly reduce T regulatory cells. So let's say I get a virus or I get really sick or I go through some big emotional trauma or I have to take a whole bunch of antibiotics or I take Accutane or I go through a big period in my life where I'm going ham on Adderall, drinking, who knows what you do, Molly, whatever you got going on. I'm not Mother Teresa. You're doing whatever you're doing out there, America. I love you anyway, right? And, and what happens is those things trigger immunologic responses. Maybe I'm eating a shit ton of gluten, I'm drinking my pain away and I'm taking Adderall to get through class, right? All of that, right? All of that is triggering your immune system all the time. Plus think about environmental pollutants, shit that's in our food, all these little stimulants, right? Huh. Shit, I'm friends with all the wrong gals. <laughs> Love it. Uh, so, okay, what happens is that the trigger happens. So the cytokine storm begins. So for example, the girl talks to the wrong guy. It's someone else's man. A bar fight starts, right? Well, if you don't have enough mother hens, then the fight gets out of control, right? That's very similar to a woman who's triggering her immune system all the time and she's on a birth control, hormonal birth control, that significantly reduces the amount of T regulatory cells. This is very clear science, by the way. What I am telling you is not random, holistic, plenty of evidence, okay, for what I'm telling you. So that's why I want people to think about all the weird things that happened with COVID and birth control. COVID is a virus. Stimulated, the, I'm gonna get shadow banned for this, by the way. So you guys aren't gonna see me after this. By the way, if I, if I die, I didn't kill myself, all right? I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there right now. Should I wake up dead when I didn't kill myself? All right, but the point is, right, that this is, this is not crazy stuff that I'm talking about. This is immunological sciences and biology, okay? So that's where we always see it. That's why female bodybuilders are the most at risk for an autoimmune disease, right? Because their estrogen is so low, they're simulating menopause. What happens to women in menopause? They get autoimmune diseases. They get strokes, heart attacks. Everything gets worse when you get into menopause. Well, if you suppress your estrogen all the time, you're likely to get the same symptoms just earlier in life. Turns out estrogen, when balanced, keeps the immune system at bay. But when it's not balanced and it gets way too high or way too low, now you've got a problem. I got no mother hens apparently. Yeah, you got rid of them. You evolve into you, you, you just get too turned up, right? Is arthritis considered autoimmune? It depends what kind of arthritis, but ironically, yes, all arthritis is autoimmune in nature because osteoarthritis, for example, by the way, framework contact, I wanna go ahead and I wanna hook you up. We have a great product for arthritis for new ethics formulations. It is called New Flame that will work on both the immune and the joint. It's called New Flame. Uh, Waleed, go ahead and get Framework Contacts information. Send them a free bottle of New Ethics New Flame. Thank you for participating, we appreciate you. Osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. There actually is no difference, just so you know. There is no difference between osteo and rheumatoid. And people are gonna go, yes there is, one's autoimmune and one's not. Yeah, uh, Joanna, uh, New Flame, you should check it out. Awesome. But, like, let's, it's only what causes it. So let's say I'm playing tennis every day, right? I'm playing tennis every day, right? And I get tennis elbow. 
And let's say over time, over my years of life, my bone and my joint gets a little off and the inflammation from the repetitive nature, the, the repetitive nature causes a breakdown in the structure. Now it's bone on bone. And now because it's bone on bone, the motion is triggering inflammation. That then leads to deterioration of the ligament and the bone and all the things. And now it hurts to move my arm. That process is the same thing that occurs if I've got rheumatoid arthritis where the immune system got triggered in the elbow and now inflammation is really active and it's causing the deterior deterioration of the area. Biologically, it's the same process, just so you know. They're the same process. Hmm, maybe I need that. I have osteoarthritis, shoulder, hip, knee. Well, if you've got, if you have osteoarthritis, you really still also have an immunological response because your immune system is at the site. Now the original trigger is physical for room osteo and the original trigger for rheumatoid is immune, okay? So what I would suggest is a, if you got arthritis, I highly, highly, highly suggest first off trying a carnivore or lion's diet. For arthritis, it's incredible. I love a lion's diet. And then I want you to take two products Okay. I want you to take Osteovantive, take two, three times a day and new flame two, three times a day and see what happens to you in two weeks. It will blow your effing mind. Give it a shot. We do it all the time. It will blow your mind. Uh, another thing that really works well is an MRT test for helping joint inflammation. Um, all right, we got to get to, you guys are going so great. Maybe I don't even need to, I got to get to one or two questions real quick from the chat. Um, first question comes from Balanso9. How should a woman vary fasting? So just so everybody knows, all of you, by the way, I know have some form of former ED or disordered eating and body dysmorphia. So when I talk about fasting, if you are still struggling with these things, don't listen to anything I'm about to fucking say, because this shit ain't gotten this is none of your business. All right. But the rest of you that have worked through your dysmorphia and your former disordered eating habits understand that there are ancient technologies that exist inside of your genetic code that can help you heal should you use fasting in appropriate intentional fashion, right? And so uh, fasting is something that I really like women to do around their period. So when you're eliminating proteins and you're eliminating estrogen, your body is going through a mini autophagy when you are on your period, okay? By the way, the first day of a, of a woman's bleed, she's usually bloated and not that hungry. She's pretty hungry leading up to the period. Um, I'll get to some of these questions in just a minute. Awesome, keep rolling those questions in. Waleed, Cam, everybody, if you could get to some of those questions, that would be awesome. So fasting is something that you should do either semi-annual like monthly, like it's a, a reduction in calories. Maria G, what's up, Maria? Uh, she's on the middle of a day three of a fast and right now I could eat the presenter. <laughs> well, Maria, hang tight. The amazing part is some of the craziest research on recovering from disease, reversing the aging process, happen at 72 hours of a fast. So you are right there. You are now getting all of the benefits that the data promotes. And so every hour that you stay in a fast, your body's getting better and healthier and healthier. So I want you to remember that. Also, by the end of day three, hunger should go away. Now, Maria didn't tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, that she didn't listen to her friend, Vince, right? And she did not prep appropriately to do a fast. I don't know if you know this, but there is an appropriate way to fast and there's appropriate way not to fast. And so if you're going to do a three to five day fast, you should prepare yourself by doing a week of ketosis, high fats, low protein, low carb. Great book, fast like a girl, Mindy Pels. Yes. You know, I've, I've had the opportunity of speaking at different events with Mindy. Uh, we've been in some of the same groups together. 
uh, incredible uh, mind that she is and some of her ideas and facts like a girl. We don't agree on everything. We do things a little bit different, but uh, almost everything we agree on. Um, but you should really, if you've never done a full fast where you haven't eaten, where you're not eating like for extended periods of time, then you want your body to be in ketosis first. You want your body, body running on ketones instead of just running and jumping off a cliff and not eating foods. Because you're gonna go from a sugar burning state to then not eating any food. Your sugars are gonna tank and it takes about 24 to 48 hours for your body to start burning ketones so you're gonna feel like shit and wanna eat everything under the sun just like Maria here. So, Pam, what up? So, don't be a Maria Although she is a badass because she is at day or at day three, she also did a fast with her sister. So I recommend fasting with friends. In fact, in fact, I'm planning a fasting retreat. I'm going to get some of my friends together. It is so much easier to fast with people doing the fasting with you. I haven't felt that though. It's been okay. Well, good. Okay. Well, give it. I tell you what, Maria check back in in just about probably five or 10 hours and you're gonna be in a different place. Like I, when I got to day four of my fast, right? Yes, we fast as a community, that's right, Pam. Um, when I get into a fast, when I get to day four, my brain, all the stress is off of me. My, I'm thinking clearly, I'm dreaming, I'm, I'm in such a place of surrender, uh, and I, my body, there's no inflammation in it at all. So smart, I learned that from you. Thank you, Pam, I appreciate that. Jill says, do you still take uh, New Ethics electrolytes during a 72 hour fast? Jill, I would absolutely recommend uh, New Ethics electrolytes. They are not out yet though, Jill. You can use Element for now. When you're, when you're in a full fast, Element sodium is decent. I'm gonna be in bed, my sleep last night was shit. Well, Maria, that is true. I recommend a little bit of kava tea, uh, at night, you can have some kava tea because it'll help balance some things out when you're sleeping and you're not eating. It'll do that to you a little bit. Um, but tonight's sleep, Maria, should be much, much better. And if you're still struggling, you can put a little bit of um, uh, MCTs. MCTs drive acetylcholine A. So if your ketones aren't up yet, Maria, then add MCTs because MCTs will force the... Um, the cycle of oxidation. If your liver, this is this is something you should know. Fats, this is, I don't know if people know this about, it's super important. When you break down fats, it happens in two ways, everybody. This is super important. You break down fats through a process called fatty acid oxidation, right? Or through a process that, that releases ketones, that uses acetylcholine A. So acetylcholine A, if you drop into a fast and your ketones don't come up, then you've got to add MCTs because it has a lot of acetylcholine A. If your liver gets over inundated with acetylcholine A, it will force it to burn fat through ketosis. So it'll burn ketones and then the ketones, your brain will get them and then you'll have all the dopamine that you need, focus and clarity. So it's super important that some people, when they feel like shite during their detox, that they add a little bit of MCT fat or that you can take acetylcholine by itself or you can add a few exogenous ketones. Um, you know, a ketone IQ is a good product that you can shop to be good for you. So think about that as well. So Maria, keep it up, girl. You're doing great. I'm proud of you. Send me some photos of before and after your fast too when you get there. How about fasting and perimenopause? Feel like it's so much harder. Yeah, Pam, that's because your body fights it, right? When you're, when you're, you know, menopause is an upregulated immunologic state, full of anti or full of free radical stress and inflammation. So when you go to fast in perimenopause or in menopause, your body is going to fight it by dumping more sugar from the liver than when you're, you know, you're in fertile ages, okay? And it has a lot to do with estrogen, believe it or not. That's why estrogen can be your friend, right? So one of the things that I highly recommend is, again, some of the things that I just talked about 
Also really prepping your body, making sure that you're in ketosis, at least burning at least one to 1.5 ketones before you drop into the fast, right? Because that will really help. And then another thing that I love to do in perimenopause when I'm fasting, I love cold shock therapy. Get in the cold plunge when you're doing your fasting, really helps your body kick in free radical stress, get rid of inflammation or free radical uh, antioxidant or antioxidants for free radical stress. How often can I flush? I did in November and felt amazing and I'd like to do it soon. A little slice of brie, you can flush uh, every three months. That's usually what I do. I'll do like three to six months. I'll do 10 days. It's always there as a tool for you. So keep on flushing, girl. It will work. Yeah, my blood sugar went walky once I hit perimenopause. That's Pam. That's because your pancreas isn't releasing as much insulin. And it's because your immune system is driving inflammation, which causes your liver to dump out more sugar to feed lymphocytes. That's part of what happens, right? Go up for me, producer Malika. You guys are killing it today. We're rolling. I'm going to start giving out more free stuff. I tell you what, a little slice of brie. Uh, I'm going to hook you up uh, to help you on your detox. I want you to add biofilm resolve. Biofilm resolve gets rid of biofilms in your gut and releases the metals that stick to those lipopolysaccharides in your GI tract. It also helps as a liver, liver clearant and it also cleans your bile which gets recycled to help you detox. So we're gonna go ahead and send you a bottle of that while we hook my girl up. Carolyn, Carolyn Wiley asks, any tips on supporting my detox pathways, please? I get histamine overload, especially at the start of my luteal phase. The migraines are terrible. Carolyn, we've got really good news. So that has a lot to do with estrogen and something uh, called beta-glucuronidase, okay? So the first thing that you're wa gonna wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to start something called menstrual ease because it, it's not about the menstruation, it's about going into the luteal phase and pushing those things. Blue pleurum is a great herb for it. So you'll take menstrual ease and you'll take two twice a day starting at ovulation right around days 12 to 14. You're gonna add something called caldeglucurate at 500 milligrams, take one of those daily, right? Start there and then you may wanna look at your hormones. Your progesterone may not be getting high enough so you might wanna add some chaseberry or some Progon B. The other thing you should consider, right, is taking a multifaceted product that has choline, B6, activated version, P5P, methylfolate, um, and methyl B12, or adenosylcobalamin. Like, uh, you can take a product called a Pure Genomics B-Complex, that's got a lot of that in there, or you can take the New Ethics, I tell you what, Go ahead and I'll send you a bottle of New Ethics formulations, methylfolate, methyl B12, liposomal. Take one serving a day. Who is that to? What was her name? Uh, go, 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 go. Carolyn Wiley, Waleed, go ahead and hook her up with one of those products. Carolyn, you can go to our, our store, practitionerdepot.com. You can get all of these products all in one place. They've all been tested by me. Every product on practitionerdepot.com has been used by hundreds and hundreds of practitioners. In fact, there is now 2,000 practitioners that use practitionerdepot.com every single day because they trust the lineup that we have in there. Every one of those products is, falls under our compliance or our manufacturing compliance standards and really works in real life. Um, what could possibly be the reason for periods lasting longer than usual? Eating way too many carbs, getting way too stressed the hell out, drinking way too much alcohol, not sleeping enough, and your progesterone getting way too low. So usually those are the things that can help. So I would highly suggest taking a look at any one of those factors, start with minimal effective dose first, and then maybe do a Dutch test or go on practitioner.com, practitionerdepot.com, and just buy the women's fat loss panel. It's only 190 bucks, the lab goes right into your email. You can take the lab, write down a lab core, you'll get your results in three days, and if you want, you can have one of my dietitians interpret it for only $75, and they'll tell you what to do. It is the cheapest way to get a quick, simple solution. If any of you are suffering, and don't got much cash to spend, you can just go buy the lab at practitionerdepot.com, pay the $75 for the review, and start there. That's a very cheap way of getting really high-level uh, recommendations, so go ahead and give that a shot. 
Uh, all right, Josie Graham says, New Ethics B12 methylfolate is legit. Thank you, Josie, I appreciate you. All right, we are kicking it in the chat tonight. It's, a, it's like a club in here, everybody's getting it. Practitioner Depot Labs are the bomb. Thank you, Meg, awesome. Is there a certain body fat percentage needed for B, B, BHRT? So this is Mackie uh, McKee uh, says, is there a certain body fat percentage needed for BHRT, which is bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, to be effective? Well, w what do you want it to do? All right, it's gonna be effective in lots of people, but if you are, the more overweight you are, typically the more hormone you need to feel it and the more underweight you are, the less hormone you need to feel it. So just keep that in mind. If you're petite, take a little. If you're a much, much bigger, larger, bigger framed woman, you're gonna wanna start on a little bit more and still work your way up even higher because it'll, it'll probably take a little bit more. Uh, that's a general rule of thumb. Um, BHRT is often associated with fat loss goals, but have you helped underweight women with BHRT? So uh, one of the lies that was told, I, again, I have an endocrine, uh, endocrinology clinic, as everybody knows, uh, VitalMed, VitalMed.com. Shout out to all my amazing practitioners of VitalMed. If anybody tells you hormone replacement therapy helps you lose weight, they're a damn lie. Bullface, bullshitter lie. Any doctor on here wants to tell me that they give hormones for immediate weight loss, you are a lie, sir or, or lady or you're just so misinformed um, that you're hurtful. Hormones prime your body to put them in the right anabolic state to then in uh, encourage muscle gain and encourage fat loss. However, when you're adding hormone, it will bring water up. You are not losing any weight for at least, not from the hormone anyway, you're not losing any weight for at least eight to 12 weeks, right? Now, like testosterone, Testosterone can assist in great body composition, which can keep fat off or promote fat burn, provided that you're, you know, you're in a caloric deficit, okay? But it takes probably eight to 12 weeks to get your load where it needs to be, your body to balance out, water to go away, put you more in an anabolic state, and then it helps you burn more fat over time, right? You're a saint, Vince, thank you. I, I, am, I am definitely no saint or guru. I'm just a guy trying to help people. <laughs> Don't put me on a pedestal. It means I got a further, further distance to fall. Um, KPV peptide, is it good for MCAs? I've heard mixed results. I will tell you, evolve into you a great peptide for MCAs is something called Selenc. Selenc is, a, is really good. Uh, for the nervous system. It's really good for calming systemic inflammation in the body. It's a nasal spray. Megan is the best. Thank you, Sage. She is amazing. Uh, Selenc is really good. And, and there are other peptides that are coming out. I will tell you that uh, thymosin alpha-1 may be beneficial, but I'm gonna tell you in some people it could make it worse, right? I, what I do love is rapamycin. Right, I love rapamycin, three milligram tab, three times a week. Um, and you can get all that from Vital Med at great prices, better prices than almost anywhere in the country. Um, Selenc is awesome for the brain, it most certainly is. One of the other things you may wanna consider, actually, if I had to give a cocktail for mast cell, it would probably be LDN uh, and um, probably, I would go LDN if, you have, if you're really anxious. I would go, if you're not anxious, I would do oral BPC-157, which probably won't help you because you've already probably tried some of this. But if you haven't, oral BPC-157 can help. And uh, Selenc. Where do you get Selenc? Great question. You can get it from my clinic with my amazing practitioners and doctors. Um, it's called vitalmed.com. Drop it in the chat below, Waleed, or Waleed, go ahead and send that woman a link. I did try BBC. Everybody tries BBC and it only works for some people. And the reason it only works for some people is if the reason that you have mast cell activation is because of inflammation inside the GI tract. You don't have inflammation inside the GI tract. I'm fairly certain what you have is, back, is commensal bacteria overgrowth. So you're never gonna get rid of it until you get rid of the overgrowth. I guarantee it. Go ahead and do a GI map. 
If you do a GI map evolve into you, if you do a GI map right now and you don't have at least four overgrowth markers and you can show me your, your GI map that doesn't have that, I'll give you 500 bucks. I'll pay for the test, but I guarantee you do. I love Vital Med. I just started BHRT finally through you and I'm feeling better already. Thank you so much, Bree. I appreciate you. We really do it right. Finally, a hormone clinic that is thinking about you and all the things that matter to you and doing things for the right reasons, not just what makes cash or push you through. What's the difference between a GI map and a Zoomer? Great question. So a gut Zoomer is actually way more comprehensive. It's gonna look at way more profiles of bacteria. Um, it's gonna look at more inflammatory markers. Uh, and while all of that is true, Valerie, where am I located? Well, we are in Tampa, but guess what? We're everywhere. We're on the internet. We can see everyone virtually and everything can just show up at your house. Check out vitalcoaching.com. My medical team, my coaches, my labs, the supplements can all just show up at your door and we can use your house as the, as the medical practice you visit. Uh, go up a little bit real quick. I want to answer the rest of, the, of her question. I, can, I need to give out more products. I got to give more products out. Um, oh, a framework. So while GI Zoom or, or uh, GI Map has less markers, it has it's efficient. It gives you a lot of what you need to look at for a really inexpensive price. And then if you don't solve it with that, you can always move to the Gut Zoomer. But the Gut Zoomer is really expensive, and sometimes it's way too much data. More information isn't always better. Like let me give you an example. My businesses. I've got seven businesses. I've got about a hundred staff and twenty more contractors. And I got all these mark, like all these different KPIs that I could look at. But at the end of the day, I only look at three and it guides my decisions and that's how I'm successful in business. I could look at 27 different KPIs and I can get so confused from all the data that I never get the right answer. So a lot of times you just gotta look at certain key markers and make great decisions. And that's why I, I, I encourage people to use GI Map more than I do gut zoomer, unless you're really, really experienced. We love gut zoomer, don't get me wrong. But that's one of the reasons why. Uh, Diane, Diane is having lots of cortisol issues. Doctor wants to do a 24 hour urine test, which would be best, the 24 hour test or the Dutch test. So Diane, the reason your doctor wants to do a 24 hour urine test is they're looking for either Cushing's or Addison's disease. So they're doing probably, is it a death, if they doing a dex, if they're, if it's just a 24 hour test, that's fine. If it's called a dexamethasone clearance test, that's looking for like Cushing's. But if it's just 24 hour urine, you gotta do the Dutch test. It's way better, way better. I would highly recommend the Dutch test, okay? If you're gonna do one. If it's just a 24 hour urine. If they're doing a dexamethasone clearance test, that's different, definitely do that. Um, you know what, go up for me real quick here. Uh, since you're having cortisol issues, Diane, I want you to know how great of products we have to help with that. Court Ease is a game changer for so many people. I'm gonna send you a free bottle of Court Ease from us at the New Ethics family on the house. Please enjoy that while we get her information. I wanna give away, you guys have been killing. It's one of the best question nights we have had. Let's give more shit away. Let's give shit away. All right, keep going on a little bit further for me, producer Malachi. Let's see what we got. All right, thank you. I got about five minutes. We'll see what we got. We're gonna run this bad boy out. What do we got? What do we got? Tips to calm histamine levels during period. Great question. First product is called Menstrual Ease. Take two twice a day uh, during your period, uh, a couple days leading to your period, and then take two twice a day during your period, and at any one time, take six at once. Menstrual Ease will change your life. I'm gonna send you a free bottle. I'm also gonna send you something called Histamine Block. Histamine Block. You take one with your meals. Between that and the um, uh, menstrual ease, you should do great. Just her way. Waleed, hook her up. L uh, Linda says, I've been told testosterone increases MCV. If that's, if, if that's the case, is higher MCV a cause for concern? So wait a minute, are you talking about, wait a minute, are you talking about MCV, like mean copular volume? So mean copular volume has everything to do with the size of the red blood cell, right? And the volume that it's carrying. Um, testosterone, if you take a lot of it, possibly could, but not usually in females. That has a lot more to do with 
red blood cells. And yes, sometimes, you know, you get your hematocrit can go higher, which possibly could uh, raise NCV, but NCV is more due to hydration status, iron, hemoglobin, transferrin. Uh, has let, testosterone's not gonna increase your NCV. It can increase your hematocrit, but that's in guys who take a lot more. Uh, Linda, I think someone's fear mongering a little bit. I think you're gonna be okay. Now, if you're talking about mast cell activation, which I don't think you are, which is MCVA, uh, no, it definitely does not. Is there a consultation to get started? Valerie, yes. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, we will, we will give you a complimentary consultation. Uh, Nathan, please reach out to her personally and let's get around with our experts to kind of go over a case. Valerie, we send you this really in-depth assessment that'll look at all the different systems of the body and find out uh, systemically from a 20,000 foot view what's going on to provide more information in the call. So make sure you fill out the assessment before you go on with our expert guides. All right, we're going to answer one more question and give something away. Oh, I didn't go to this. I'm sorry, B uh, Balan Solo, I didn't get to it. You did. did I? No, I, I didn't talk about how to vary the fasting. So if I, I would recommend once a year, a three day fast, I think everyone should do one. If you can't do a complete fast, then you should do like a five day OMAD fast, which is one meal a day. So you weigh all this, think of it kind of like Ramadan to a certain degree, where you eat one really big meal a day at the end of the day and that's all you eat. So it ends up being like a 23 hour fast, okay? And I would do that for up to seven days or 14 days. Um, probably seven would be fine. But women who want to stay metabolically healthy, I would really encourage you to think about doing once a month, right? Uh, either an OMAD or a couple day, like what we call, uh, they call it um, protein fasting, where you get your protein 15 grams or below 15 grams a day, your carbs below 30 grams net carbs a day and then eat around 700 to 500 calories. Get your calories real low, let your body clear itself out while you're menstruating for like two or three days. It can really, really help the rest of your cycle. Something I would recommend. Can you fast but still take all the supplements? Kyle, um, what about fasting once a week? Uh, Amanda, if you're gonna fast, it should only be time once a week. That's not a bad idea for motility purposes, but you should not reduce your calories that much. Well, if you eat more calories, yes, you could fast once a week. Uh, you could fast once a week. Um, would you fast even with low thyroid? Sometimes the way to solve low thyroid, depending on why you have low thyroid, is to fast. However, no, off the, off the rip, low thyroid, I would not fast, no. Um, I did a juice fast and felt so much better. Evolve into you, that's because juicing makes you release insulin. Insulin lowers your blood sugars. That's why we do juice fasting all the time. Most women who start not being able to lose weight, it's like a form of type one diabetes. They're not releasing enough insulin when they eat. It's why I made GDA Max Plus, the most powerful insulin producing supplement on planet Earth. Take two with your food, evolve into you. I'm gonna go ahead and send you that. I think I sent you something else. Go ahead, Waleed Karat sent her a GDA Max. Take two with your higher carb meals. Listen, everybody, this has been incredible. I appreciate you all. Next Metabolic Monday coming to you 6.30 live. Next Monday, I will answer all these questions, give her out lots of products, and stay tuned in case you won some of the $20,000 that we're gonna be giving away over the next week towards life-changing health coaching programs. Thank you so much. See y'all.